high. So now we've got only one more case of integrals to cover. This case is associated with improper integrals. So this is a very special type of integrals and we generally can encounter improper integrals in two cases. The case number one is when we have infinite limits of integration. Okay, so what does it mean? Look, for example, what if we have an integral from a to infinity f of x dx? Then we would get f of infinity minus f of a. How much is that? We don't know. We don't know whether this is infinity. We do not know exact number what it is. So basically it leaves us a very problematic situation. We simply cannot evaluate the value of this expression. But look, of course we can have a, a case where we have an uh, integral from negative infinity to some p. And again, we are encountering the same problem. And finally, we can have a situation where we have an integral from negative infinity to infinity. This one we are going to do in statistics. Very important case. And then we have f of infinity minus f of infinity. And look, all these three cases are simply impossible to evaluate. We just cannot calculate the exact values of these expressions. Well, we can do it using uh, the techniques we've been using this far. But look, our experience should tell us that if we have a situation, if we have a situation like that, uh, then we have infinity somewhere, what we can resort to? Limits, of course. So look, in the first case, we can say that this integral, so from a to infinity f of x dx, is by definition given as a limit with b approaching infinity out of a b f of x dx. And look, similarly, in the second case, integral from negative infinity to some b, f of x dx, is by definition given as a limit with a approaching negative infinity out of a b f of x dx. And finally, if we are in case number three, so we need to evaluate we need to calculate this improper integral then we need to calculate two limits basically so limit with a approaching uh, negative infinity and b approaching infinity out of again the same Now, if, if limit exists, because remember, limit does not always have to exist. And of course, we're going to actually, when we're going to move on to example, I'm going to cover with you a case where the limit exists. Uh, and when the, uh, uh, there is no limit. Uh, so if the if limit exists, the area can be calculated. The area can be 
calculate it. Uh, it can calculate it, and and we say that uh, and we say that that improper integral is convergent. is convergent or if it's not so otherwise it is divergent So, well, let's just say that we have reciprocal function 1 over x. And let's just say we are interested in what is the area below this function from 1 to infinity. So I want to know what is the size of this entire area from 1, but of course till infinity. Okay, so look, we already know how to approach this problem, so let's start. Look, this means that we need to calculate integral from 1 to infinity out of 1 over x dx. So we are calculating integral from 1 to infinity out of x to the power, uh, it is, uh, uh, well, yeah, x to the power negative 1 dx. Okay, look, now we need to, of course, use the logarithmic, uh, uh, we need to use the logarithmic rule. But, again, because we've got it from 1 to infinity, it's positive, we don't need to use, uh, we don't need to use a natural, a, a absolute value. So we got that this is a natural logarithm of x. And here we've got b approaching infinity 1. OK, and look, now how do we approach it further? First, we substitute b. So first expression here is going to be limit with b approaching infinity out of ln b then minus ln 1 as it's uh, 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 of course ln 1 is just 0 so this part is inconsequent now uh, over here how does this how does ln x function look like and the next function look like this. It goes through 1 and it increases indefinitely as x is increasing, right? So the bigger the b, the bigger the L and b. So in this case, limit is equal to infinity. So limit does not exist. So, in this case, area cannot be calculated. Okay, so, a little bit our function 
and let's introduce instead of one over uh, uh, instead of y equals to one over x, let's try the function y equals one over x squared. Okay, so this function looks very similarly to this one, but of course, first both sides here are above uh, and, and, and both parts of the function are above the x-axis and remember this is x squared which means that here when we were dividing here by 1 uh, we got 1 then when we were dividing by when x was 2 we had 1 over 2 then 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 6 right? here values of the function actually are dropping a little bit faster because look if, if x is 2 we've got 1 over 4 then we've got 1 over 9 uh, 1 over 16 1 over 25 so you see the values of this function are declining faster now let's see whether this is going to have any impact on our results because we still want to know what is the size of the area below this function between 1 well, and infinity so from 1 to infinity so again we need to calculate integral from uh, 1 to infinity out of uh, 1 over x squared dx so we get that this is integral from 1 to infinity out of x to the power negative 2 dx which is equal to uh, integral uh, okay uh, of course which is equal to x to the power negative 1 divided by negative 1 right so minus uh, 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 negative x to the power of negative Okay, and here we've got b approaching infinity and 1. Okay, so look, we go through uh, 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 we go through exactly the same steps, right? So we calculate the limit with b approaching infinity out of negative b to the power negative 1. Uh, yeah, and uh, minus negative uh, 1 to the power negative 1, right? Okay, let's rewrite this a little bit before we start calculations. Look, here we've got that this is the limit with b approaching infinity out of negative 1 over b, right? But out of this, we're going to just get plus 1. Okay, so now let's think, what is the value of this expression? Look, if we divide 1 by b, and b is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? The expression gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So as b is infinitely big, so as we divide by infinity, this expression goes to zero. So look, our limit, uh, uh, our, uh, uh, our improper integral is equal to one because this turns into zero. So look, this time it turned out that size of this area is 1. And now the question would be, how is that possible? How is that possible that this, that we, we, okay, look, when you think of areas, the good thing to use, to think about areas, of them 
in terms of some rectangles, right? The rectangles are easy to, to imagine and we know that in order to calculate the size of the rectangular, all I need to do is to multiply A by B. Okay, and look, we know that the distance over here and over there is 1, right? So look, if we would have a rectangular, hypothetical rectangular, with one side equal to 1 and the other side equal to infinity, then 1 times infinity, it's definitely infinity. So it would be indefinitely big. But look, we know that the values of the function here are dropping, right? So they are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So look, we actually definitely not going to have infinitely big area. We're going to have area that is smaller than infinity. Well, but it's still... It, oh, sorry. Okay, it's getting closer and closer and closer over here. Right, and basically from this moment on it's still declining, but we barely see it, right? Because uh, we do not have microscopes in our eyes. Okay, so look, what is the idea behind this? Like we know that this area is definitely lower than infinity, unlike over there, but uh, why is it so small? How is it possible? How is it possible that something that is going for so long is actually a area that is so tiny? And look, it's and why in this first case? Okay, let's just say that from now on this red, pink, orange color is associated with the function 1 over x squared and the blue color is associated with the function 1 over x. Look, if I would like to draw a similar picture for 1 over x squared, it would look more or less like this. of the function 1 over x are falling, but they are falling slower than the values of the function 1 over x squared. And look, this is the entire key to understanding, uh, to understanding what is happening. Look, in the first case, what do we see? One side one side is getting longer and longer and longer. One side of the rectangle, right? But the, but the height is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, the question is, can the fall in, uh, can the fall, what, what uh, what is actually having stronger force? Increase in the length or the fall in the height? And look, the answers we already have on a blackboard. Look, in case of 1 over x, you can imagine it like this, the fall in the values uh, in the height is too slow to compensate for the increase in the length of the uh, 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 increase of the length, right? However, in case of this function, the reverse is true. Look, here actually the values of the 
uh, 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 the values of the function, so the height is dropping actually faster than length is increasing. So it cannot call it. So so each increase in length is more than compensated by decrease in height. This is why in cases of some functions like 1 over x we cannot calculate the area because it's too big so it's infinitely big because the fall in height is not compensating for the increase in length however in other functions like in case of function 1 over x squared the opposite is true the fall in height is faster than increase in length and this actually can create such a, a paradoxical to uh, when you first hear it result that this entire area is equal to 1 especially that just a couple minutes before calculating that this is equal to 1 we've calculated that this is infinitely big right and they look almost the same however once you understand the difference between the two you see uh, where uh, this uh, those two outcomes are common okay look uh, the, those the, 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 the case of infinite limits of integration is the more important case uh, but of course we need to consider the second case in which improper integrals are arising and this is the case of infinite integrals okay and then just uh, illustrate the case uh, of a infinite integrand with a very simple example. Again, we're sorry, well, to the function y equals okay, 1 over x. Okay, so let's just say that now I want to know what is the size of the area below this function between 0 and 1. So I want to know what is the size of this. the right 
right hand side. Let me just put it in. in out of LN. Okay, because this, again, of course, this is what just one. <laughs> Sorry, LN1 is just zero. So we will have that this is equal to negative limit with A approaching zero from the right hand side out of LN A. Again, let's see, let's see how natural logarithm of X looks like. Okay, and look, what do we see on this graph? As x is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, what is happening to y? Y, so ln x, is getting lower and lower and lower and lower. Where does it go? To negative infinity. So what we get over here is minus negative infinity, which gives us infinity. And again, we have a situation in which area cannot be calculated. Okay, so this is it. This is everything you need to know about mathematics for my exam. I'm gonna prepare just one more video and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how your exam is going to look like. Well, it's gonna be online and, but okay. This is it for today, thank you for your attention and good luck on the exam, take care.